Okay, it's wonderful to be here with the FOSS United community. Uh, very excited to talk to you about the project that uh, we've been working on. So this is going to be about the 10-bed ICU project uh, where we have created a healthcare platform called CARE, uh, an open source platform, obviously. And we want to talk a little bit about it to the FOSS community. Uh, let me see if I can get... Okay, so this started during the COVID wave too, where a lot of deaths happened unfortunately, and we decided that we'll create ICUs in government hospitals, especially smaller government hospitals in secondary centers, which cater to small towns and uh, villages. And we very quickly knew that we need a technology platform in order to scale this rapidly as COVID was affecting a lot of people. This was about critical, uh, creating critical care infrastructure. So we'll talk a little bit more about the care healthcare platform itself. And soon we realized that we need this tele-ICU because there's not enough specialists in those rural hospitals. And we'll talk a little bit about how we um, uh, built technology in order to solve that problem. And of course, we have some other models, uh, modules training and community participation. But I'm going to today talk about these two uh, um, uh, items mainly, the care healthcare software platform, as well as the tele-ICU innovation that we have created. So the first pillar, as you can see, is about creating the ICU itself, a 10-bed ICU, as we call it. And th this deck, uh, I think I used it in the for the CM's launch here in Karnataka. So you can see the Karnataka logo as well. Uh, so we basically provide about 50 lakhs worth of ICU equipment to actually create critical care infrastructure in a small government hospital where the poor go to. Uh, uh, you know, when they have very serious conditions, whether it's COVID or whether it's cardiology or oncology or surgical um, aftermath and so on. So these ventilators, five paramonitors, all of this equipment is state of the art. We import actually ventilators from Switzerland because it's an AI ventilator and so on and so forth. And we uh, deliver the equipment, we install it, we train the uh, staff as well as we give a three-year warranty. All of this is provided by the 10-bed ICU we raise the money and we donate to the government in the government hospitals. Okay, that is the first pillar. And this is an example of a ward actually in care hospital in Mysore. And you're seeing actually our equipment out there with LAN networking, with cameras on top, uh, high-risk cameras and so on. This is uh, one of the 10 bed ICU hospitals. So today I wanna talk really about the care technology platform. And uh, we really need the FOSS community to sort of uh, support us in this endeavor. So rapidly, as soon as the COVID Delta wave, I mean, in fact, even before the Delta wave, this care technology platform was built out of this team, the Corona Safe team in Ernakulam in Kerala, and they very quickly created a, a, a software sort of substrate on which all these hospitals, 300 hospitals were connected. And you're actually seeing the dashboard being run out of a network operation center. And this software were, uh, could basically give you real-time analytics of how many beds, ICUs, ventilators, where they were empty, where patients could be sent, oxygen monitoring, as you know, Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, many places had a dearth of oxygen. Many people died because they couldn't get oxygen in time visualizations of capacity on GIS maps, facility map management, inventory uh, monitoring, and so on. So all of these were built on the CARE platform, including dashboards at the state level, at the district level, and so on, and at the hospital level. All of this obviously is absolutely free and open source. In fact, it runs on an MIT license. Uh, and uh, the United Nations recognized the CARE platform as the 50th digital public good in the world. Okay, so uh, so that you know uh, that brought a recognition and a lot of downloads and usage. In spite of delivering an ICU, actual ICU in a government hospital, and creating the care platform, we still had a problem. The problem was there wasn't weren't enough specialists to handle the patients there. We didn't have enough intensivists, pulmonologists, and so on. So obviously, technology again came to help. So we created this idea of a tele-ICU hub in a medical college, such as the Mysore Medical College at KR Hospital, and then connected it to various smaller taluk hospitals where we had launched our 10-bed ICUs, such as Viraj Pet, HD Kote, Nanjan Gud, Sante Marali, and Madavalli. And with that, what we were able to do we at this uh, medical college, we created what's called a tele-ICU hub where we connected over the uh, cloud, we connected specialists okay, at the medical college 
to help the patients uh, on the other side in small hospitals through our cloud platform. As you can see, there are large screen, 55-inch commercial-grade uh, TV monitors, and we have uh, done LAN networking in the desktops and servers and so on connected to the internet. And basically, they're able to do various things okay, at a local smaller hospital. They're able to do doctor-to-doctor -doctor video communication, they're able to do, you know, the, see the patient on a high risk camera. They're able to look at the patient health record. We built an EMR, electronic medical record, as well as we deep integrated the five para monitor and ventilator so that it can be, you can actually see the time series data at the hub at the medical college. So all this is running on cloud. We have many partners. In fact, Google Cloud gives free access to our states for one year. And all this integration, Fipera, high-res camera, doctor-to-doctor -doctor communication, patient health record are all running over the cloud so that on the left side, a specialist, a specialist at a medical college can treat a patient or help the junior doctor there. So you can you can see the video-to-video -video communication. You can see uh, the live monitoring of patients using the high-res cameras, the face view, the, the bed view, the face view. The even the um, equipment monitor view and so on. And we developed this uh, platform on a fairly robust architecture, a sort of layered architecture, if you will, where you can see that the underlying persistent layer at the bottom and then sort of a, a platform layer, which uh, runs various you know, uh, platform level uh, modules, but the green stuff is truly where the healthcare stuff is, right? So you're, you're, you, everything from patient management, clinical management, facility management, you know, patient shifting from uh, smaller hospitals to larger hospitals, provider management, that's doctor management, assets, inventory management, all of this was built. And all of this was built in a year and a half, thanks to a large community of people who came and helped, right? Today, we are also integrating this to Ashman Bharat Digital Mission, ABDM, so that we can be compliant to the national grid on healthcare. Okay. Uh, and the impact we are having is quite large. Within a year and a half, 200 10 bed ICUs. Okay. Remember, each of this costs quite a bit of money 50 lakhs to just put the equipment there let alone the software and the LAN networking and the cameras and all that for tele-ICU, 200 of those we have deployed in eight states. Okay, the states of Karnataka, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh in the south, and the states of Sikkim, Nagaland, Manipur, Meghalaya, uh, and Assam in the northeast. They're all, pretty much all of them are live. Okay, some of them still need a ribbon cutting, but uh, you can go to our website, a uh, website at 10-bed ICU, you will see us having launched all of these sites, right? So this is an entirely NGO run project, okay? It's run out of the e-government's foundation. It's a foundation that uh, Nandan Nilekani and I started in 2003 to create governance uh, tools, ERP tools for municipal governance. And since then we have gotten into healthcare, we've done DIWOC, which is the QR code certification for vaccinations, which, uh, you know, we helped the country with 2 billion vaccination uh, certificates. And then, of course, the other NGO, Karuna Trust, run by Dr. Sudarshan, is also a very close partner. Lots of funding agencies have come forward to fund our hospitals and our software and so on and so forth to help us deploy all this, as well as many other medical and technology partners. So I want to talk a little bit about... Um, digital public infrastructure coming out of India. As I was the CTO, the founder CTO of Aadhaar in 2009, we built Aadhaar as a digital public good, right? We built it as an innovation platform for identity. And on top of that came various other things, right? Aadhaar enrolled 1.33 billion people. And today, uh, and many of them are bank linked, 647 million. And so many authentications, 74 billion authentications and 12 billion KYCs have been done, very low cost, right? This is the kind of digital public good we want to build in healthcare, right? But the experience India has is tremendous, right? So the next level, you can see the sort of payment transactions that are going on in this DPI is $70 billion worth of digital public transfer, uh, direct benefit transfer uh, of NREGA, PDS, and so on a trillion dollars worth of UPI payments going on last year, right? So many transactions taking place because it is a nicely layered digital public uh, infrastructure that India has built. 
many, many micro ATM transactions, 300 million transactions, and almost, actually this number is old, almost 7 billion transactions every month right now on UPI alone. So you can see, and of course, India has come up with verifiable credentials, digital locker, and it's got a lot of usage. So my point here is in sharing the DPI journey of India, where we have taken a layered approach of identity payments and then other ecosystems is basically to address this question. How can you transform India's healthcare? One, we can create an Aadhaar-like system for healthcare delivery. Care can be a very, very powerful platform. Right? Number two, we can integrate with Aishman Bharat digital mission where we can be not only ABA number, healthcare ID number integrated, but also a healthcare information provider and a healthcare information user, as well as we can do claims processing so that every time a patient checks into one of our government hospitals, the insurance companies pay the hospital for those services. And hence we can make sure OPEX is also taken care of the operational expenditure. We can deploy it in every government hospital across the country, this open source free platform like we have done in other areas, whether it's identity or payments. Technology can be used to scale and ensure that the best doctor is available for the poorest Indian in seconds. Okay, what I mean is cloud-based software available on the mobile, AI ML based, whether it is cancer detection or um, uh, diabetic uh, retinopathy or whatever the uh, pathologies. And we can use the new technologies that are available uh, to deliver better healthcare. And, you know, my goal is, can we put out care in every district of the country, in hospitals, in government hospitals, in every district of the country, so that the uh, technology will make it possible for the specialists, the fewer number of specialists we have to address a large number of patients across not only urban India, but more importantly, rural India. So the thought is, can we create the best doctor in the world? Maybe it's an AI doctor to service the poorest Indian in every corner of the country. It's completely doable. And today we have a, a digital a global digital corps fellowship where from the AICTE, uh, uh, the, the uh, national entity, which takes care of engineering colleges, we do a 10-week intensive course on full stack development. And, uh, and each of them has to build out two apps. And then based on how well they do, we induct them as interns for a six-month uh, um, uh, six internship. And we have, um, I'm just showing you the weekly uh, leaderboard on GitHub. And we are one of the most active GitHub communities in India. And so what I want to leave you with, you know, the FOSS United community here is I think we can transform India's healthcare system. Uh, please visit our GitHub repo. Our website, tenbedicu.org, has a lot of information. If you want to jump in and start helping us, talk to Aparna Satyanathan. Uh, her email address is out there. You can also, we are putting up a form in this volunteer sheet. And we'd love to have you join us in this endeavor to transform healthcare in India. Thank you. Thank you, Srikant, for introducing the project. I'm Jijin, and I lead technology here at Tenbed ICU. And I'll be walking you through how you guys can get started with contributing to care. So you can head straight to our GitHub repository, uh, github.com slash coronasafe, and you will see all our major projects pinned directly in the homepage. So you can see CARE and CARE FV here. CARE is the backend repository that is in Django. And CARE FV is the frontend repository, which is in React TypeScript. So most of the issues are filed in CARE FV. If there are, any, if there are any additional backend changes required for those uh, issues, you can create a separate issue in CARE when you're working on it. So, when you jump straight into the issues in KRFE, you'll see a lot of issues here with the label FOSS hack. You can take up any of these issues and there are a lot of good first issues over here that you can take up in order to get, a, get an idea of what care is and uh, get used to the repository. Once you're familiar with uh, care, what you can do is you can 
jump into one of these epic issues. These are quite larger issues and something which you can show to you as well. So I'm walking through a couple of epic issues that are marked for POSAC. So here's a feature to redesign the doctor notes feature, which is an existing feature in care, to make it work similar to a chat feature. So a doctor notes is uh, kind of like a chat between different doctors that are specific to a certain patient. Now, we have a dedicated page for this. We should also have a chat box like UI, where doctors will be able to look at the chat as well as look at the patient file together. Now, you should also implement no, uh, notifications such that the feature works similar to a chat. Uh, next up, here's an issue about revamping log updates in care. Now, log updates in the UI are daily rounds uh, in care. So every patient uh, has a file and different details of patient are filed in daily rounds or an update to that file. Now we have a flat structure for this right now. And this issue is about grouping the flat structured uh, API and grouping them such that it can be queried with respect to different groups. Now we have different parameters or different sections here as written here called hemodynamic parameters, neurological monitoring, etc. Now you should be able to create different records for each of these. And the biggest advantage of this would be that you can query only the hemodynamic parameters when you need that. And you can create a timeline like UI where you would be able to show the different updates that happen to a patient's file with time. Now it's also very important for you to uh, go through all of the comments in an issue when you take up an issue. For instance, in this comment, uh, this issue, there is a comment that is clearly defining the scope of what you need to do in order to build this feature. This would be very really helpful for you to find the right direction in building something like this. Next up, we have a feature called doctor to doctor communication or uh, doctor to doctor video calling from within care itself. Now, we have taken a distance to use live kit, which is a completely open source uh, system in order to build uh, video calling within care. So you can simply use live kit, integrate with live kit, uh, make the necessary changes and have an end-to-end -end video call solution built within care. Next up, uh, we have another piece known as image processing uh, for capturing the vitals of patient. So, um, as you've seen, we have uh, high resolution cameras at every hospital that we are deployed in. And we need a system that can automatically zoom onto a certain uh, file para monitor, uh, take a snapshot of that, convert that into usable data, which is the values of uh, the different parameters, and then send it over to care and file a daily round or a log update. Uh, with this information. Now, this might seem like a complicated module, but actually most of the bigger pieces here are already uh, built. For instance, we have a separate repository in the organization itself, which takes in of all of the OCR requirements. We already have all of the authentication uh, in place in order to send this data to um, care as a new daily round that needs to be filed. Uh, you practically just need to like wire all the pieces together in order to make it work. All right, so that's four of the major issues that you can work on in care. So happy hacking.